we're going to examine two different methods of dealing with uncollected collectible receivables, the direct write-off method and the allowance method. We're going to examine them on the journal entries and how we do that and continue from here. The direct write-off method is extremely easy. As soon as you determine that an account will not be collected, you write it straight off to bad debt expense. Since accounts receivable normally has a debit balance, when I figure out that this customer is not going to pay me, I'm going to credit his accounts receivable and I'm going to bad debt, uh, debit my bad debt expense. So direct write-off is as soon as you figure it out, you determine they're not going to pay, you write it straight off of your books. Now, sometimes, and I do believe this, that most business owners do want to pay because they need to keep the relationship open. They need to keep buying on credit. Sometimes you'll actually be able to collect the money after you wrote it off. And so I'm going to show you the journal entry for collecting something that you have previously written off. Even if you've written it off last year and someone comes back to you and says, hey, I'd like to give you the money back. I'd like to pay now. The one thing you need to do is take that money. So here's the journal entry to reinstate something that's been written off. So if this customer, D.L. Roth, uh, had come back to me, I wrote him off in May 10th. On November 21st, he came to me and said, look, I'd like to pay you now. The first journal entry you need to do is to reinstate. That's basically putting it back on the books. So without it on the books, I can't take his money. So this is the reinstatement. This is taking the money. Now, if I had written off $4,200 and he only paid me $2,100, then I would only make sure I only put back on the $2,100. So this is the journal entry under write-off methods to reinstate and then take the money. We're now going to move to what we call the allowance method for uncollectibles. This is much more difficult to understand, um, but if you bear with me, I will get you through it. So what happens is at the end of the year, I have an accounts receivable balance of $200,000. I determine, this is just strictly a guess, that 30000 of this amount will not be collected. And again, I will use this based upon previous historical data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set aside an allowance into an account called Allowance for Doubtful Accounts, Bad Debt Expense. So this is a brand new account. It is called a Contra Asset Account. It is just like the accumulated depreciation account that we learned in chapter four, I believe. Um, and so, I'm sorry, chapter three on the adjusting entries. So the allowance for doubtful accounts is attached to the accounts receivable account. So the normal balance for accounts receivable is debit. The normal balance for allowance for doubtful accounts is credit. And so basically, I'm going to take the AR balance minus the 30,000 and I will have a net receivables of 170,000. I'll show you this on the next slide. Okay, so here it is, the net realizable value. This is called the NRV of my receivables. It's basically your accounts receivable minus the balance in your allowance for doubtful accounts. I'm going to back up a slide, guys. On this allowance for doubtful accounts, I call this the ADA account. It's good to just have some acronyms so you don't have to write all of this out. So again, my AR balance is now worth $170,000 because I set aside $30,000 for accounts to be written off again. That is strictly a guess. That's all it is. If I write off more than the $30,000, that is okay. If I write off less than the 30000 that's also okay. So what I'm going to show you is how to do the journal entries when we write things off. So January 21st, after I put that 30000 aside, 
I found that John Parker owed me $6,000 and I realized he's not going to pay me. So my journal entry is the credit to the accounts receivable, which removes it from my balance sheet and the debit to the ADA account. Now, if you remember correctly, the ADA started off with a credit $30,000 balance. Now I just use 6,000. So in there now would be my $24,000 balance credit side. So this next slide is important to remember. Basically, if I end up with an unadjusted balance of a credit, that means that I wrote off less than what I anticipated. So basically, if I started at 30,000 credit balance in the ADA account or the allowance for doubtful accounts, and I end up with a $2,000 credit, I only wrote off 28,000. And that's okay because you just guessed at how much you were writing off. However, if I have a debit balance in there, it means that I wrote off more than I actually set aside in the allowance. And that's also okay. But the balance on the unadjusted balance, the debit or the credit side, is the key to this. Pay attention to where the unadjusted balance is. We'll take a look at it shortly. So this is kind of what I'm doing is I'm setting aside money into a bucket. And then as I find customers who aren't going to pay, I take it out of the bucket and empty it. Okay. So we're going to move on to what happens at the end of the year. The ADA account is broken into three major components. One is called the unadjusted balance. One is called the adjusting entry and then the adjusted balance. So here's what happens. This is the second year of operations because remember, I put 30,000 in here January 1st. This was just money setting aside. All during the year, I found people to write off and I found that I had a total of $26,750 of write-off. So when I add that up, I now I'm going to have an unadjusted balance of credit $3,250. So it's very important. The unadjusted balance can be credit or it could possibly be debit. But you need to know exactly what side it is on. So this was the beginning of the year. This was all the amounts taken off during the year. And this is what's left in there. Now, this means that I own, I wrote off less than what I set aside. If I had written off 32,100 in this year, that means that I've actually wrote off more than what I set aside and my unadjusted balance will be a debit. Extremely important to know which side of the T account you're on here. Again, I either have a credit balance or I have a debit balance. And always know where the unadjusted balance is because that's going to tell me how I'm going to write things off. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, writing off in the allowance for count, doubtful accounts uh, account. And um, it's, we'll come back to this slide. So I figured out that Nancy Smith owed me $5,000. Oh, let's back up. I'm sorry. So basically, I'm backing up, guys. Here's the journal entry to write off using the allowance account. If this customer comes back and pays me, I need to reinstate it back into the allowance for doubtful accounts and then take the money. So let's go take a look at that slide. Sorry about that. So this customer, $5,000, I wrote her off on April 2nd. She came to me June 10th and paid me. So here's my reinstatement journal entry. So I'm adding it back to the accounts receivable by debiting it. And I'm putting it back in my ADA account by doing the credit. And then I take the money. Okay. So this is the end of this particular video. Just explaining the journal entries for direct write-off and the allowance account.